Hi and welcome to Paints and Glitter. My name is Raquel and today I'm going to share with you how you can make a mini album using the dies from the kit from Tonic Studios, A Lifetime of Adventure. In the kit you will have received a sleeve with some papers. I have used both of the teal colors, the ginger pie color and the cream. And then if you want to, you can supplement if you have any extra classic card in any shade of blue that matches. And I've also used papers from the Blue Hues collection that was also included in the kit. And some Craft Perfect paper, the smooth card, which is the heavier cardstock, is what I use for the foundation of the book. So if you're going to follow along, you may want to grab some of those. And if you like, you can also use the low tack tape to help you along, as well as a pokey tool, as we call it. This little tool here will come in handy. Also a pair of tweezers. You're also going to need a needle with a big eye that will fit some twine. So I'm going to share with you how you can do that. And Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive, of course. This adhesive is going to work for your entire mini album, so I highly recommend it. If you need to supplement the glue, you can also use the Craft Perfect double-sided red line tape for any mirror card. So let's begin. So starting with the largest die here, of course, I've cut out the pages. And what I decided to do is to cut it twice out of... 300 GSM cardstock. So this is nice thick white cardstock. This is going to be the cover and I'm going to be cutting into this paper as well. But before I get to that, you're going to use the same die which cuts the same shape and using the papers that came in the kit, which are this size here, the teal blue is this big. I suggest that you place the die like so and then you're going to be able to get two pages out of each and also there's going to be a little space left over on that one edge and what I suggest you do is take your other die that you have that is a layering piece and place it there and then go ahead and get that little piece cut out as well that's what I've done over here and as you can tell I cut two of each I did the lighter teal color the the dark teal and then I have two in that really beautiful brown that came in the kit and then I also went ahead and did it with the 110 pound cardstock that I'm going to be using for the covers so none of it went to waste and I'll be using this of course using the heaviest cardstock which is 110 pounds or 300 GSM what I'm going to suggest is that you fold your paper not at the first but the second line from the curve so I'm going to call that the second fold line and just fold it like that and burnish it, okay? I'm going to set that aside for a moment, but then I'm going to take what are going to be the pages of this book and I'm actually going to fold them all the same way, even though you could vary this a little bit. I'm going to be folding these along the third line from the right, so it's one, two, and three. Fold it just like that and burnish. See in your die set that there are these strips that have the little holes in them, and they actually do not cut on the edges, they cut into the paper. So, using the smaller one of the two, I'm actually going to place the beveled edge that it has facing the outer portion of this page. So the beveled edge is toward the edge of the fold. And I'm going to take my low tack adhesive and you can use it over and over again. So it doesn't matter what it looks like so long as it works. Go ahead and center this the best you can from top to bottom. Place your adhesive on your page and run this through your die cutting machine and then repeat the same step for every single paper that you folded. All of these are the colored papers that you're using. So I'll be right back once these are all cut out and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so now that I've cut all of the interior pages of my little mini album, 
if you see when you remove the die you're gonna have all of these little holes along the side but because the paper was folded of course you're going to have the same thing on the back so go ahead and use your little pokey tool if you want and then remove all of those you can of course throw those all out or if you like to use them on different projects of course it's up to you these are really tiny um, so I'm going to share with you how I'm going to just go ahead and use these pages but I wanted to let you know that they now measure five and a quarter inches wide by five inches tall and it's a perfect size to fit a little photo. You're going to take the thin die that you just used to perforate the pages of your mini album and you're going to face that beveled edge toward the very first channel here making sure that you center this once again go ahead and place your low tack adhesive and run this through your die cutting machine and i'll be right back and share with you how that looks as well i'm now going to remove that double-sided tape and set that aside because i can still reuse it and the reason I went with the smaller die, it was just to match the perforations on the interior pages, but you could certainly use the second one in the set, which is the larger one here. And that's also going to emboss into your paper with a bunch of little dots there. So that's really up to you. There's also this other embossing die here that you can use and it has words on it. And of course you can use it to place those words right onto your cover. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I think it's going to look really pretty. So I'm just looking at the direction of the words, of course. And I think in this direction it's going to look really nice. And then I'm just going to run this through the die cutting machine one more time. And then you'll be able to see what that looks like. But I just wanted to show you there. Here's the perforations that of course I'm gonna be able to just push right in, just like that, okay? And then I have essentially, just to explain it more easily, I have my little channel there of perforations, I have two channels that are untouched, and then I have the next one that's going to have the embossing on it. So that should help you kind of gauge where this is going to be folded okay and I'll be right back with this as well now you get to see that that did leave a deep embossing onto that paper however it's a little bit hard to see the words so I might actually take a strip of the mirror cardstock do the same and then just place it on top at the end but this is what you should have so far that part there is totally optional because you could also use your Nouveau Mousse and then just rub it all the way around and you're going to have a nice shiny version of this. Moving if you like. along, I'm now going to match up the pages that I have here with this perforation that I now have on the base. So I'm gonna just set this aside for a moment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to alternate the colors. I think I wanna go in this direction here. And I'm going to do the lighter, the darker, and the lighter, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to take a needle that I have. And this is for uh, thicker fabrics. You can use it for leather and that sort of thing. The eye of this needle is quite large. And I'm actually going to take some twine and I'm going to thread this through. So of course you can use whichever color you like. I happen to think that yellow and blue is a great combination. So I'm going to use my Craft Perfect Twine in Marigold Yellow to do this. So I'm just gonna get myself um, just a comfortable amount just in case. Better to have more than less. And now I'm going to thread my needle. If you need to, you can also use that double-sided tape on here for the tip if you think it's gonna fall apart. So it's just a little hack. Just place the tape on it and fold it over like that. Then take your scissors and cut this tape into a perfect little point. And that's going to help you thread your needle. You can do this, of course, with just about anything, <laughs> so long as it fits through. But that's a 
Another way that you can use that uh, Craft Perfect Low Tech Tape with your crafting. Okay, so I'm going to just leave myself a little tail here. To get your little book started, go ahead and take your twine and poke it through all of the little holes on the very top left hand corner there and pull it through. Give yourself a little tail and if you're nervous you can definitely take that low tack adhesive and pin that down for a moment. Okay. You're then going to take that twine and feed it through the top hole of your back your front cover I should say. Okay, so you're going to be working front to back. Pull it all the way through. Not too tight, just tight enough to hold it there. And then you're going to go back in through the second hole. And if you line these up nicely, it should make it nice and easy for you to aim at the next entry here. And of course, it works much smoother if you've removed those little pieces of paper that I talked about, but you're going to go through there and then you're going to pull. Of course, you want to be careful not to ruin your twine, but you've got that so far and we're going to continue on going back and forth and of course adjusting as necessary, but I'm going to go through the front again, making sure to line up all my papers and just be gentle so that you don't tear your paper. If you need to stagger them, you can, if it makes it easier. And then keep going back and forth, like so. Gonna come back in and find your little entry point here. I'm trying to make sure I don't have those little papers in the way. Should have done that first, of course. Okay, so coming back in, just like that. So it should, should look like that so far. Go ahead and pull. And of course, this is just one option. I just thought it would look so pretty. And I'm gonna accommodate my little thread there and go ahead and come, go back in from the front. Once you've reached the bottom of your page, it's up to you, but you can go ahead and pull this all the way up to the top, or you can thread it through here if you want to. Um, it looks actually really cute if you do that as well. Um, of course, this is, you know, just a design. <laughs> it's really just one of those things where it's up to your personal taste how you do this sort of thing. Um, but you can just go straight on up to the top if you want to. I'm going to go ahead and just thread it through and that's going to hold my twine there. And now I can cut off the excess, but I'm first going to tie a little knot. You can see I don't, I no longer need that tape. I'm going to tie a little knot here at the top. Okay. And I'm not going to tie it too tight just yet, but just a square knot should be sufficient here and then cut away the excess. And now this is attached to the background here. And you can tell it's a little bit staggered here. Now you could do it on the next line over. I really should have done that and then just folded this at the very first fold line here, but that's okay, we can keep working with it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna match up this to the front so that I can close the book before I proceed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself some room, of course, to be able to play around with the pages, but I need the same amount of room on this side as I do here, okay? So it stands to reason that if I fold this over in this direction and I have two of those strips here, 
that I'm going to need two on the other side as well, okay? The difference now is going to be, however, that I'm actually gonna face the square portion forward so that I can close this. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to fold this so that I have enough to cover the front of my book like this. And I'm gonna fold it here. It's gonna be the second line in. Okay. And I said I needed two little portions here, so I'm now gonna fold it at the very last one as well, just like that. And then this little portion that looks like a sail is actually going to adhere to the back of my book. And I need to make sure that I have enough room to fit my pages. So, I might have to hide it with another piece of paper because of the way that I folded it, and that's okay. Because as I said before, you can decorate the back. And I'm not going, going to aim to the very edge. I'm actually going to aim closer to that little dip in the paper there. And I'm going to make sure that I have plenty of glue here because this is going to, going to adhere to the back. And then I'm going to cover it all with one long I'm piece going to be attached here. But I'm going to gauge it, of course, depending on the length of my paper. So I'm going to be uh, moving this over a tiny little bit here. Just want to make sure that I have room for my pages. And I need it moving over a little bit more. A little bit more. And I'm going to cover this so I'm not too worried about it. Okay, but of course I should have moved those little holes over one. And it's going to have a tiny little gap here. And if you're uncomfortable doing it this way, you could always extend the back first and then do this. Okay, so what you want is that fold line matching this, the end of your paper. That's it. And now, as you can tell, I've got a tiny little gap there. However, I'm going to go ahead and cover this up. I'm just going to cut another piece and cover that. And now I have a portion that's going to close on the front and it's going to match very nicely here. So now I'm going to proceed to decorate. There's a lot you can do with this, of course, and what I was thinking was that those little leftover pieces could come in handy by uh, adding them to the book. I think I'm going to start with the brown, and what I was thinking was that this is, of course, going to open. You can fold it if you want to, or you can adhere it at the bottom and create a little pocket, but I thought it would be really sweet if it had yet another little pocket on this side of the page kind of like a coordinating little crossover pocket like that so what i'm going to do is i'm only going to apply adhesive on the very bottom here very tiny and i'm only going on that little beveled portion that the paper has and i'm going to apply this on the interior portion of the page matching the corner of course all the way to the edge there okay. and now i'm going to go ahead and use that other one here and of course you could layer this however you like i just thought that that would look really cute place this one here Using the two rectangles that come in the die set, you can use the largest, it has a little beveled edge, and then the smallest has a stitching edge. 
And what I did is that I cut out that large one out of that beautiful brown paper that came in the kit. And then I did use 110 pound cardstock in white and cut the smaller frame. I'm going to layer these together, but first I wanted to show you in this kit, you can cut out three sizes of little tabs that you can place on your pages. I thought these were so cute. So basically if you've glued down one or if you want to do it before you glue it down you can go ahead and take one and of, of these. of course you can place them on the outer portion however you like but all you do is fold these in half apply your glue and i think i want to place these on the top like that i just think they're so cute but you can place them either on the smaller paper or on the larger frame. I just thought it might stand out a little bit more if I did it on the white. So I'm gonna place it there and then you can place your glue on the back here, of course. And if you're doing uh, this as a recipe book, you could definitely print out your recipes at the size that would fit the paper and then cut it out with the dies and that would look really pretty. So you can definitely do that. Add a Nouveau drop or a gem whatever you like. And I'm going to proceed with adding others. So you can go ahead and add it after you've glued your paper if you want to. I'm gonna add this one here. This one reminded me of a little fish. I thought that was cute. You just pinch your paper and let it dry for a moment. Once these are nice and dry, of course, you can now fit them right into these little pages, just like so. And of course, you can decorate this further if you want to. Place that one there. Next one in here. And the last one in here. And have that one poking out a little bit. Now the other thing that you can do with this kit is that you can cut out little pockets. Here's one for instance and I cut it out of the cream cardstock that came in the kit. I use the largest one for that background piece that's going to create the pocket. I use the second one that's solid for the background piece that's going to decorate that nice shiny layer and then using both of these together I was able to cut out the third layering piece that looks like a globe so very well, pretty I'm going to go ahead and apply some adhesive here just very sparingly onto this layer this is going to go right on top of the mirror cardstock you want to be patient with that and then you can go ahead and apply this to the background. You can apply adhesive right on those little fold lines. And then let's not forget the last little tab here. It's going to also fold in. Okay, once you have your adhesive on all three corners, you can apply this to your page. I think I want to place it right about here. So there's that. I'm just going to burnish this. And what I'm doing is matching up those little stitch lines also, which I think look really cute. So there's Cut out one. two pieces of paper that measure four and five eighths by five and one eighths. And I'm going to apply this to the background here. And that's going to hide that seam as I had mentioned before. So I'm going to place this one here just like this. 
and I'm making sure that this reaches all the way around of course but that it doesn't reach that fold line here because that's where my pages are attached okay and I still have my fold over here and I can reinforce this portion if I want to as well I'm going to start over here to make sure that I line this up perfectly, just like that. Okay. And if this really bothers you, you can definitely do, as I had mentioned before, and move this little line of holes just over one and you'll be okay. Hindsight is always 2020. <laughs> but this is what the back is going to look like now. And I'm just going to make sure that this is nice and level. I think it is. Okay. I call that an embellishment opportunity, so I'm not done yet. Okay, so now I'm going to open my little book and place my little pocket in here that I mentioned. I'm place this here right toward the corner, but not quite at the edge, just to make it a little decorative. Just like so. And I've got a cute little pocket right there. Just gonna fold that in. Okay. The other thing that you can cut out using this die set, of course, aside from these interior pieces that I, you see here, is a little tag that comes with the set. It's super cute, it's like a little luggage tag. And then there are several sentiments. This one that I stamped out says, strangers are just friends we've not yet met. And of course, this would look adorable along the side of the book. So I think that's what I'm going to do, or maybe I'll place it in the front. But I want to make sure that I decorate this, and I think that I'm going to add yet another panel of blue to the sides and the front, because I have some of this left. So I think I'm going to reinforce these pieces with the rest of the blue that I have left here, but I am going to leave myself a bit of an edge here and I'm also going to leave myself an edge for that decorative portion that says the uh, the name of the countries. I think that would be really cute. So let me cut this down and I'll be right back. Before placing the papers on the outside cover, what I'm going to do is actually attach a magnet using red line adhesive onto the portion of the cover that folds over. I'll be able to hide that magnet with a piece of the teal cardstock that I've cut out using the die that creates that sail shape. So I just use the deluxe adhesive to place that onto the cardstock. And I've also cut out a square to cover the inner portion of the cover that folds over. And on here, I'm going to be adding one of the pockets that I'm creating yet again with that sail shape. I did cut this out of the mirror cardstock and I'm layering it over the cream cardstock. And I'm placing just a little bit of adhesive only on the perimeter of that. I'll go ahead and create my little pocket here. In the end, you'll see the pictures of how I finished that. But for now, here's a matting layer, of course, that you can add. And using the circle die come, that comes in the kit, I cut out a cream piece of cardstock and cut that in half. And this is decorative, but I think it's a really pretty finishing option here for what will be the spine of this mini album, which is on both sides because of the way that it's folded. And it keeps that color throughout the book, which I think is really nice as well. Now I can go ahead and finish the outer portion. I did measure the cover. I determined where my magnet is, placed the second one on top, and added a little bit of glue. 
and that gave me a little bit of a marker as to where that magnet could go. I covered it with red line adhesive and then covered it with cream cardstock layered with the teal. And for that sail portion that I want to put on the front, I first cut out a piece of the cream cardstock and I used the two really beautiful intricate pieces here to cut out what's going to be the cover decorative portion. And I also did use some of that glitter cardstock included in the kit. I cut out a tiny portion here because I only need a small bit and I'm going to use it as an inlay piece for the compass on this design. So what I did is I placed a little bit of a Nuvo adhesive strategically exactly where I'm going to be placing that cardstock. And of course, this is where you can use the tweezers. It just makes it a little bit easier. And you can definitely do this throughout the book. You're going to see also how I finish the inside. So I did do a little bit more inlay, but only on the inside of the book. And that gives it a really beautiful finish here. But as you can tell, it's only three little pieces for the outside. I add my Nuvo glue, but you could definitely use double-sided tape behind that paper if you wanted to. And here I'm going to layer this right on top. Now I did cut a strip of the glitter cardstock. I decided to place this over on the left hand side where I had previously done the embossing. I figured this would look a little bit better because I decided to emboss it onto that mirror cardstock and place that on the right hand side instead. And now I'm going to finish off the cover of my mini album using the sentiments included in the kit. Of course there are several more but I did use the die cut sentiment, which is the title of the book. It states a lifetime of, and then I stamped and heat embossed the sentiments love and laughter onto the cream cardstock and layering this with the red adhesive, the double-sided tape, I was able to use that to apply the cream cardstock onto the mirror card. And this will now complete the cover of my mini album. I think the set has so many different little features that can be used in different ways. It was fun to layer all of the papers and I just had a fun playing around and just coming up with different ways of using the dies. And I hope that you like it too. So here we have my final product. This is what I ended up coming up with, which was to cover the front, as you see here, with the sentiment, actually, I moved it over to the right-hand side so that I could use that gorgeous mirror cardstock, which of course came in the Craft Perfect, the Blue Hues collection. So that is the Imperial Blue, if I'm not mistaken. So that's the one that I decided to use here. Then from the glitter cardstock that came in the kit, I went ahead and decorated the little front here, which you can do an inlay with. And then I added another strip over here to just kind of balance it out. So I really like the sentiment also that came as a die. And I used this in two other cards that I'm going to be sharing with you. So it says a lifetime of, and then I heat embossed the love and laughter. And as you can tell, I did use the little pennants that were available in the kit, as well as a tiny little circle die that came with it. And I'm really happy with the results. The little magnet is hidden behind the little layering piece here. And of course, on the inside, what I did was that I finished off what I had added to the little mini book, which was to go ahead and layer the pieces here that you can cut out using the die set. And of course, it's this piece here. And you can use that one and the outer, the one that layers with it, just like that. Place those two together on top of your cardstock cut it out with your die cutting machine and you're going to be able to get this shiny paper here uh, of course using the 
paper in the kit and if you see here they're the two different colors of blue that are in the mare cardstock and what I did was that I added that turquoise color the lighter one which was the Turkish turquoise I added as an inlay inside of the imperial blue and that gave me this look here which I think is so pretty and then I went ahead and also stamped the word adventure hate embossed it there on one of the little banners and this little tiny plane and the trail come as part of the stamp set so I thought it'd be fun to add that there then on this side here's where I added the tag on the inside of the book and then I did use little dimensional adhesive uh, the little um, pop-up ones there from craft perfect so that it would be static even though it looks like it's got a little bit of movement and here are the of course little inserts that I shared already and every page now has a little bit of shine to coordinate I just thought it would be so pretty to add that there and it's a nice elegant touch to the page I think and it opens nicely of course you can lay it out just like that so you could, of course, write or journal on one side and add a picture on the opposite if you wanted to use it in that fashion. And then, then in the back, uh, right in the center page here, I made another little tag. And this time I did use the glitter cardstock for the base. And instead of using the full tag as you see there, I went ahead and cut off the top. I added one of the little tabs that you can add for pages or however you like. And then I did stamp that tiny little sailboat in a different color ink. And what you see as the little waves is actually the stone drop. I just added it in little swishes there. <laughs> I thought it was so cute. So that's going to go right back here. And my little boo-boo that I made, I covered up with two little banners there. As I said before, anything you do that you don't love, it's an embellishment opportunity. I'm going to close my book and show you the back. And on here, I'm going to go ahead and add another little banner that I have set apart here. So that way it matches the front. I was going to layer it with another one that has a stone drop, but I think I'm just going to leave it as such. So I'm just going to place this one here. And my little book is going to be complete. So I'm quite happy with the results and I had so much fun playing with this set that I went ahead and used some of the leftover pieces and I'm going to show you how. What I did was that I used some circle dies that I have in my stash uh, from Tonic Studios and I created a frame using two circles from that gorgeous specialty cardstock. And then I took the leftover pieces here from all of the pieces that I used here in the book. I didn't want to let those go to waste. So I took the leftover pieces that would have gone all the way to the end of the page here. And I adhered them behind that circle. And I cut away the excess from the outer perimeter using my scissors. I also used the Nouveau Embellishment Mousse and I colored onto vellum as you see there and I also made myself a stencil using a piece of cardstock. I just used the one die and cut it diagonally over and over so I could have the stencil here and using this little tool here that pounces color as you can tell it's still blue I grabbed some of my mousse I went ahead and colored onto that vellum and it looks like little bricks almost there. You can see the texture and the shine. It came out so beautiful. And in the center here, you see a blue circle in the imperial blue followed by the Turkish turquoise. So what I did here was that I used the smaller of, I'm sorry, the smallest circle available with the kit. I used here on the center of these little pieces that I had all adhered together and then behind it I placed the Turkish turquoise and I had actually cut this vellum using a larger die that has this scallop edge that you see in white 
and I took a smaller circle and cut away that scalloped edge and I had these pieces left over of the vellum here so I took my quilling tool and I don't know if you can tell but I did curl them creating like little swirls that look like they have there's movement there now and on the center I did add some of that stone drop and of course the sentiment here that white layer by the way also has stone drop added to it I just painted it on with a paintbrush so you can always put it on your mat and water it down or use it as is which is what I did and now I have this nice sandy texture on my card the background is that gorgeous paper in the blue obsidian and then it opens like so I use that smallest circle again just as the little stopper for my easel card and then two of the banners and that completes the center one of them in the Turkish turquoise and the other little banner says love all I did was heat emboss it in white with a uh, white embossing powder from tonic studios and then here there's the circle for the sentiment followed by another circle also painted with the stone drop and then the largest circle here i actually did color with an imperial blue glitter marker just around the edge so that it would match the card and i'm really happy with that i think it's so elegant so it'll look better i think in the pictures at the end of the video and last but not least using the honey gold paper i created this card here and i'm super proud of how this came out because I, it's a little different and i like to share that i like making cards that can be masculine because a lot of people struggle making masculine cards although i think this card would be apt for just anyone especially if it's a person that loves being in the water uh, loves boating so here's what i did i grabbed the die that creates this solid piece here and that's this one and just to share with you how you can use your dies i first colored the background paper which happened to be white with the nouveau embellishment mousse and i also mixed it with the stone drop so I just brushed it on almost like a dry brush technique that gave me that really beautiful texture. I cut it out with this solid die here and then on the smaller one I actually moved the die up on the paper. I literally just moved it up a little bit so that way I could have a smaller little sail and of course that's something you can do with any die. Then what I did was that I used the largest rectangle here from the set. This was cut out of that gorgeous specialty cardstock. And that's behind there. I went ahead and did use a white pen on that beveled edge just to make that pop out a little bit more. And for the little uh, mosaic look down here in the water, I just used the little leftover pieces that fell out of the banner from the book these little leftover pieces here i didn't want them to go to waste of course so i use them here and if you're wondering how i did this background here this was so much fun this is actually the packaging where the dies came they were stuck on that plastic acetate so what i did was that i took the die that makes the mini album i took this I cut the acetate out twice so that I could have this portion here plus the portion that folds and I cut it down basically the yeah. acetate and I just cut some strips of that obsidian blue obsidian and I placed them on the outer edges there I wrapped that around that honey gold paper and I did also stamp the little sentiments that say Adventure Awaits and Wanderlust. And it made me think of the names that people give boats, especially in this area here. Uh, people who like to sail, they always have really pretty names for their boats. So I went ahead and put those there. And using the tiny little banner that came with, or it's an actual, actually an arrow. Uh, using that, I went ahead and used it as if it were the little flags of the boats. And it is a top folding card, but I think it's so super elegant. So 
I'll of course have pictures at the end of this video. I do hope that you like the projects that I've shared with you today, that you leave me a comment, let me know which one is your favorite, and don't forget that you can subscribe to the Tonic Studios Craft Kit if you like, and it's not a commitment, so you won't be uh, obligated to keep the subscription. You can definitely buy a one-off kit if you prefer to do so, and there are different uh, options available for you. I'm going to have affiliate links at the bottom of this video. Any use of those links does not cost you any more. It just gives me a tiny little bit of commission for my work. And I do appreciate you having stopped by today. And as I always say, I hope that you can be inspired and be blessed. And I thank you so much for watching. And thank you so much, Tonic Studios, for sending me the kit and the other items so that I could work with this. I very, very much appreciate it. And I look forward to making many more projects for you. Bye-bye.